We're broadcasting live from the Build America Mutual offices in downtown New York City. Let's get an update on what's going on in the world of municipal finance. We welcome uh, Scott Richborg, Build America Mutual Head of Public Finance, and Patrick Haskell, Morgan Stanley Head of Public Finance. Pat, let's start with you. Give us a sense. I mean, what Lisa and I know about the municipal bond market is a lot of money is flowing into the municipal bond market. Uh, rates are at all-time lows. Give us a sense from Morgan Stanley's perspective. How are you guys viewing the municipal bond market right now? So we think, you know, across the risk spectrum, we're late cycle. Um, and Muni's offers a haven in late cycle. Um, you know, people don't know whether it's going to be, you know, the $17 trillion of negative yielding debt that's going to be the next thing to go, whether it's the high yield market, whether it's CLO market or equities. And because of the quality quotient in Muni's, um, we think it's a safe place to play. All right. It's a safe pace, place to play. Uh, we are here, though, at Build America Mutual where they're literally paying and picking up the risk in this late cycle. How worried are you about that, Scott? Well, we're very conservative in our credit underwriting. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I think we actually think that municipalities are in fairly good shape. Um, their credit is uh, still benefiting from the rise in property taxes, uh, property values around the country. <clears throat> um, Paul. Yes. Sweeney, <laughs> who's you. paying them all. Uh, Go on. Yeah. We'll talk about New Jersey specifically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but then how do you square that? I mean, Pat, honestly, if we're in late cycle and you're seeing excess everywhere and you're seeing worker cash going in the mini bond market, how can we be seeing really strong kind of credit fundamentals? For be, the, the reason being is we expect um, the uh, if, if and when there is the next recession, it's going to be led by the corporate balance sheet, not by the consumer. So we expect the consumer to still be still be strong through that. What we think is going to be a shallow uh, dip into next year. That consumer, then the we can still support strong tax rolls, um, and we think that will actually help where munis are today. And that that's evidence in all the numbers when we look at the tax tax rolls from both states and local governments. Scott, give us an idea of the decision making process for munis- an issuer mm-hmm. to insure their bonds or not insure the bonds? How does that work? So from the issuer perspective, it's a pure savings analysis. They look at what the cost of their bonds would be if they sold without the insurance, and then they uh, compare that to what it would cost if they sold with the insurance less the cost of the insurance. And as long as that is a positive number, and generally it has averaged about 1% of the par for the issuer, they're saving about 1% of the total par using bond insurance, they... uh, you know, make the economic decision to add the bond insurance and save the money. So what percentage of issuers generally <clears throat> insure their bonds either with, with you guys or with somebody else? Sure. Of the total issuance, it's just around 6% of the total par that's issued, but around 15 to 17% of the number of issuers. Okay. So obviously we insure a lot of the smaller, lesser known uh, municipal uh, issuers around the country and not the super large state of California, New York cities that all of the institutional big investors around the country are very familiar with. All right, so Pat, you've lived through, you both have lived through the past financial crisis and everything that happened. Today I saw a story about how rents in New York and Boston are coming down. This just is an ongoing trend of cooling in some of the uh, most taxed regions. I'm wondering how that factors into the creditworthiness of some of these bonds if they if people won't be able to pay or, or, or won't be on the hook to pay as much if their apartments are worth half as much. Look, I think that there's, there's demographic trends that people need to pay attention to, but I don't think it's any any looming disaster. Um, you know, the yes, rents are coming down because capacity has been added in New York City, um, but people are still paying a lot of money for apartments. I mean, I read the paper this morning that Jeffrey Epstein's apartment is going to go for $100 bucks. I mean, that's Jeffrey <laughs> so, Epstein. Yeah. Come on. That's not our example of, no, uh, it, it, you know, it's come it's on, the paragon of real but, estate. But, but my, my point simply is people are not, you know, going in droves. They're not following the president of Florida. Um, so I think New York and Boston are safe. They, they, the rents went to very elevated levels, and they're coming off. But I think, again, getting back to, you know, all joking aside, to the trends that we're looking at, if the consumer continues to stay as strong as the consumer has been um, at this late in the cycle, things like, you know, other parts of our market, you know, things like airports will continue to do well, transportation sectors, um, you know, the, uh, the we, we tend to like, we like health care, um, a little less so higher ed because of competitive pressures there. So, Pat, are you, are you surprised that we're, like, what, I, what I'm hearing about the municipal mop? municipal bond market in terms of issuance is it's mostly refinancing. Are you surprised that maybe municipalities aren't taking this low interest rate environment to 
fund more infrastructure, fund more roads and bridges and things like that? Um, you know, on a, as a it, this is not a Morgan Stanley point of view as a citizen, yes, but I think that's more of a reflection of the politics that we're dealing with today um, than it is the uh, the absolute uh, you know term structure of rates. Um, if we could get you know both sides to agree on how to implement infrastructure reform, um, yeah, I think people should be you know spending new money on it, not just worried uh, worried about the refinancings. Scott, a lot of people are predicting that next year the rally in muni bonds will continue uh, with a number of factors of pushing money into the space. Do you worry or do you hope that municipalities actually use that money to do more and to build more? Sure. We're obviously very pro-infrastructure uh, financing around the country. As um, long as it's not a bridge to nowhere. <laughs> as long as right. it's not a bridge to nowhere. Um, <laughs> But I actually think that the capital plans uh, that we're seeing, you know, come out of municipalities around the country are very well thought out. Some of these plans have been shelved for the last couple of years. They've been waiting for additional revenue so they can fund these projects. Um, And as we all know, the infrastructure across the country is in great need of improvement. We all travel through airports. Almost every airport that I travel through around the country is under some kind of construction um, expansion. Uh, so the biggest challenge for the municipal issuers is their overall budgets are growing, but growing at a relatively slow amount. But they have other costs that are growing, like pension cost, um, cost of services that are outpacing the growth in their overall budget. So it is constraining the amount of their budget that they can dedicate to pay for new infrastructure. And I think that's the biggest challenge from a municipal issuer standpoint is they all want to fund these new projects, but the pie is only so big, and how do they uh, divvy up that pie? So, Pat, 30 seconds. Um, What's Morgan Stanley's view of the municipal bond market in terms of issuance next year? Do you expect the municipal bond market to be active? Uh, we do think it's going to be active. Um, Mike Caesar, who owns that call for us, hasn't come out with it yet, um, so that'll come out next week. Mike st- does a great job on this stuff, but I think that um, coming out, coming off the trading desk, we're north of four hundred billion um, in our estimate, and I, you know we'll have the research guys kind of like I said come out when they do. Um, but it's going to be a busy year. Um, I think the you know we've seen thirty percent of the the issuance this quarter come in the taxable domain. That's bringing international investors into our market, which I think is exciting for the issuers. It's going to lower their cost of funds, and it's going to be bring car- cross over buyers into credits that didn't exist before. Thank you so much for joining us, Patrick Haskell, Morgan Stanley, Head of Public Finance, as well as Scott Richberg, Build America Mutual, Head of Public Finance.